The Music is Life podcast has our own merch now over on tpublic.com. Click the link below in the video description. Looking for some new threads? We got t-shirts, long sleeves, hoodies, crew neck sweatshirts, tank tops, baseball tees, and also clothes for kids and onesies for your little infant metalheads. Don't want clothes but love the Java? We got you covered with coffee mugs and travel mugs. Need protection for your electronics? We've also got phone and laptop cases. We've got everything you're looking for at the tpublic.com Music is Life podcast store. Use my link below for fast service. Thanks for your support. TerraNut is proud to offer you a natural nut bar chock full of healthy fats, minerals, and protein that meet your demands. Go to their website, www.terranut.com. You can order from them directly and they will ship it to you. Use my coupon code LUMAVS and you will get a 25% discount on your first order. TerraNut Superfood Snacks, www.terranut.com. Don't forget to use coupon code LUMAVS at checkout. Fuel your life. Severed Angel, the deluxe edition of the self-titled debut album, available now. Pick up your copy today over at SeveredAngel.com. Available on all streaming media platforms. Severed Angel, get ready to ride the dogs of war. Ladies and gentlemen, how do? We are ready and waiting for you now. If it's a fight that you dare see, we've acquired our strength through pain. No more are we pathetic game. We you are the reason why we claim that we've all become this way. And I regret this prison that I created for. So the, um, you know, the I expect 110% every time we go out there, you know, no clams. I remember a, a band director literally staring me down saying, do you know how to play this piece? Or are you just acting like you don't in the middle of everybody? Wow. Um, sat no. there embarrassed a little bit, you know, a little red assed and then uh, dusted myself up and played it better. Got to the point so that he pushed us so hard during the um we we do summer uh you know pre show workouts mm-hmm. and uh this the 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 junior year of high school we were doing uh, uh 70s music and we were doing uh you know Frankenstein from Edgar Winter very awesome song very awesome song well uh the brass had the guitar so we were going to play the guitar and he looked at us and just went i want this loud and so we got to this point where like our umbrasures, our lips were splitting oh, from all really? the work. Like we were in physical pain doing these songs all day uh, into the night to like midnight and then going to sleep and then doing it again the next day for an entire week straight. And we were just pounding it. I mean, we were doing the full runs with the guitar. We were doing everything, the entire solo. That's it got, insane. That, it, that, that, that is an insane solo from Mr. Rick Derringer. Yes. And I do mean like that. So we would, you know, we would do the, we would do the beginning where he's doing all the things and then like we would break out and then it would be the drums doing the entire drum solo our snare drums and everybody doing that as our drum solo, as our part where we're just marching and not playing. 
but yeah, we're playing the freaking chorus and everything to that thing. We're freaking, and it's, and he wanted it loud. It got so bad that I started ringing notes through the hallways of our high school. That's how, how loud it was. How far did the echo go? <laughs> All the way down the school. Oh my God. It was, it got so bad. Like when I did it, he turned. It went, what was that? And then, told, and then he looks at, it, he goes down. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, all right, I have, I have officially, you've officially blown a gun over. Now I have to rein you back in. So, yeah, I mean, I, he, he was, extremely hard taskmaster but also um was a person who would defend the students when people mm-hmm. wouldn't um this man got fired being a band director for defend defending one of his uh band students against a, a, a criticizing another teacher really yes huh after 40 years of being the band director, he got fired because he criticized the teacher on Facebook, defending a student who was complaining about it. I think you mentioned that that was a yeah. while ago. This happened. Yes. This is a while. This is a while back. This is about 10 years ago. Yeah. Oh, this is, this was 10 years ago. Okay. Yeah. Um. But yeah, he, I mean, I have heard, I have heard those verbal eviscerations before. I mean, uh, he would do if you screwed up a halftime show, it would be nothing to in the middle of like right on the end of the side and end zones, you know, where they have the big area where like mm-hmm. usually you have the track and field pit. Mm-hmm. It would be common for us to be doing push ups in the middle of the crowd <sighs> if we screwed up something that bad. Well, you want to be in something if you want to belong like you're part of something yeah then yeah i can understand that mentality where it's like you know you fuck up you know yeah you so, pay and, a penalty and and you know he got it he caught it from his the drum and brugal choirs of, of dci he he got that from the university of tennessee you know probably the southland it's a thing. And he had, he had multiple, multiple people in every single high, you know, college marching band in the area. Mm. Somebody from his band was in those bands. Mm. So the ETSBOA, the biggest one of the, of the area, the region with everybody regional, the regional bands, we always had a handful, like eight or 10 people in those bands. Mm. So we we're talking, you know, out of 600 people out of, you know, 60, 80 schools, 10 of us were there. Got it. So, I mean, this, it was hard. It sucked. There were days where you just wanted to throw stuff. You're running. You wanted to punch him a few times. <laughs> even, even I got into his face once and he had to like back. He had to calm it down a little bit. Cause I was just like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not taking this abuse from you anymore. Old man. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> you know, I mean, I think to be good in your craft, you need discipline. I get and it. my first instrument, and I mentioned this to you, was was trumpet. I told my father that I wanted to learn guitar. And he said, how bad do you want to learn a guitar? And I was like, what do you mean by that? He's like, are you willing to learn another instrument uh, first before you pick up guitar? And I said, sure. And he said, okay, because our our church, St. Demetrius, is having a Saturday orchestra band. We don't want you to go down there, you know, test it out, pick an instrument, learn that. If you get good at it, maybe I'll get you a guitar. So, you know, I, I picked trumpet. I wish I had picked saxophone, but I picked trumpet instead. And, you know, they started you on third trumpet. You know, they, they teach you hot cross buns. They teach you the the scale, the uh, the B flat concert, B flat scale, yep, B flat scale, and also the chromatic. Yeah, you know how to keep maintenance of your of your instrument. And I realized that before I get into trumpet one, I gotta pay my dues. But it got to a point where I was still third or second trumpet. Mister Barry Dolman, one time he heard me playing clams as uh, Barry as a as a Buddy Rich. Um, stated and he pulled me aside he said Lou I can't believe I'm going to say this to you but your playing today was utter bullshit and he's like what's he's like 
I can't have this in my band. And I said, Doc, in all due respect, I just don't feel like applying myself if like I'm forever going to be the third or second trumpet. And like these guys are really good, but it's like I'll never have my chance to like grow. And I'm kind of thinking, I'm like, ooh, did I just make a mistake saying that? No, you didn't. Well, he he saw that I was upset and he figured out, why don't you take the baritone horn? Yep. <laughs> and, and I was like, what's the baritone horn? And he pointed at it. I'm like, that thing? <laughs> and, you know, and and uh, and he said, yeah, it's the same keys as trumpet. Same, same, you yeah. know, uh, same. Uh, well, the, this, this is the same as a euphonium player. Absolutely. So I, I, I did the same thing. So. So I picked it up and all of a sudden it's like I found my instrument. Yep. And, you know, this was uh, two years after picking up trumpet and I played it for like about nine years straight. And I loved it because I was like, finally, I get to like I I, I get to have an instrument is, that I'm known. Th- for. This is your thing. Yeah. And, you know, he, he was so good at like turning, you know, chicken shit into chicken feed. You know what I mean? Like he, yeah. was, he was so good at that. Um, him and my high school music teacher, Dr. Daniel Burwasser, were probably the two music teachers that I learned the most from. And like, I, I still apply like their, their disciplinary tactics to me playing the guitar because, you know, you've heard the Severed Angel album. Yes. Playing those parts and practicing them in case of the one time we ever do make it a stage, it's not easy. So, you know, you have to keep your chops up. You have to keep up your conditioning to uh, be able to play that stuff. I had one teacher, though, in middle school. Um, he said, all right, everybody, play a, play a C, con- uh, B fly concert, C. That was great. I'm like, we didn't even tune. He's like, all right, yeah. let's go to the first song. And I'm like, you know, that's when I realized I feel like public school in New York City at the time was just a way to pass you through just to get you out of middle school. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know? And so uh, like for, for me, for me, I had a very similar path, obviously. Uh, mm-hmm. Mine actually happened eighth in eighth grade is when I realized I was never going to progress as a trumpet player and move to, to the baritone. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and then uh, so what, what, what made me realize I was going to be good at it was hearing a, uh, judge actually comment saying, "Okay, you found something with that with that kid in the with the baritone. You found that you found something with that kid. Mm-hmm. Work on that, you know, because it was a lot of you know just because it was middle school band. We're all going to sound like crap, you know, but we're going to try our best. Um, mm-hmm. And he's fixing. He's trying to pick all the things out. And then I get to Tennessee, and I'm starting right back where I was. I was first chair in Nevada, straight to third chair in in East Tennessee." Mm. <laughs> my story when i went to uh college when i went to st john's university i auditioned for the pep band um i choked with the baritone horn yeah and i was so disappointed in myself i said you know what after i graduate high school i'm never picking up an instrument again like that's how much it got to me because i feel like i let dr delman and dr burwasser down you know and if anyone i grew up with is watching this and is laughing at it you got to understand that these two guys are like my mentors you know so like them and my brother like those are like the three men in my life who were the most instrumental in me you know trying to shape myself into becoming not just a good musician but just constantly getting better and you know it was a freak accident and and i hadn't played guitar that entire summer and then I went on a, a campus ministry retreat my freshman year. Somebody left a nylon string on the, on the acoustic. Uh, some, somebody, left a, somebody left a nylon string acoustic on the piano. And I just picked it up and I started playing it. And then all of a sudden, like one person started coming to me. Two people started coming to me. Ten people started coming to me. And they were like, can you play this? Can you play this? Can you play this? Yeah. And I was like, how am I doing this right now? You know, like. I, 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 normally I get stage fright or I get shy, but it's like for the first time in a long time, it's like I'm playing and I'm playing for myself now. Exactly. So it's, so it's like all of a sudden it's like I, I achieved like this, to quote Bill Murray and Caddyshack, I achieved 
total consciousness or something <laughs> like that. Um, you know, and 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 I was, I'm sorry, I'm I'm almost wrapped up with the story. So, you know, I was jamming with these kids and whatever. And then all of a sudden, my buddy Jason Crawford uh said, Hey, you know, then this was my last semester of my senior year. And he said, you know, we need a baritone horn player for uh the um for 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 the jazz band. And I was like, oh, what do I get out of it? He's like, oh, you got Grant. I said, oh, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> so I got a nice little check in the mail, and that was pretty cool. Um, so I was playing baritone horn again, soul guy there. You know, we had some great stuff that we were playing. Then all of a sudden, senior concert comes. The guitar player, no shows. Just no shows. I had my Les Paul up in the radio college radio station. Because sometimes I brought it over and I would just like, you know, jam stuff with friends of mine. And Mr. Motley was his name. Uh, Bill Motley, great, great conductor, uh, was like, you know, we need a guitar player. And all of a sudden, Jay Crawford's like, Lou's got his guitar up in the radio station. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? I didn't practice the songs on guitar. <laughs> and he's like, you could transfer it. I'm like, oh, no. And Mr. Motley's like, can you play? I said, yes, sir. I could play this stuff. He's like, then go get it, boy. Go get it. And went, ran up, <laughs> ran up the stairs. Both. I almost hit my friend, Carrie Olson. Oh, I'm sorry, Carrie. Almost bulldozed you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love you. Anyway, so I ran into the radio station, grabbed my guitar, went back down, did a quick tune, set it up and everything. And then all of a sudden it's like, you know, we break into sing, 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 and uh, you know a, a bunch of other stuff, and uh, and he gives me two solos at the end of the concert. It's like, Lou, these solos are yours, and uh, one of them was um, "Smooth" by Santana. Oh gosh! Now I'm not a Santana fan. Um, I, I prefer the Abraxas album more than you know the Supernatural album. I think anybody with a brain cell would. <laughs> But um, no, 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 I, I mean, I still enjoy Supernatural. That's fine. But I prefer Abraxas. Um, so all of a sudden he's like, all right, Lou, your turn. So like, you know, I knew the song and I knew the data, you know, the, the, the noodle parts. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I like, break into a solo and like I'm only supposed to get like four measures, you know, of, of the uh, of, of the break. And Mr. Molly's like, keep going, keep going. I'm like, huh? I'm like, I just keep going. And then all of a sudden. I, he I, I, he doesn't stop me. I'm like, don't you want to get to the saxophone players? Like, keep playing, boy. And I'm, like, <laughs> okay, I'm, not, I'm not fucking with this dude right now. So, yeah, it's um, needless to say, that brought me back to stage. <laughs> the biggest thing I remember from from Dr. Glenn Rogers um, for me was actually um, every time you were doing interviews with all the band directors, he had the most outlandish way to recuse himself. And what way was this? He would literally sit when he would go, we'd sit down in the interview. Of course, we're wearing our goofy band uniforms that look like red coats from the British army. We sit down and he just does this. <laughs> hand in head in hand. This just. Okay. Just sits there like that. Starts looking at all the other band directors dead in the eyes. Uh -huh. He's doing that. He's not doing that to me. He's doing that to everybody else except for me. Of course, I also felt like he's probably doing that because he knew I, you know, I got no problem public speaking ever. Mm. You know, I was never the the shy butter. You know, I was always the the peacock ready to fly. So he just knew. Just just put the kid down in the seat and let him let him go. <laughs> <laughs> unleash this kid i found him three years ago just let him go just let him go no but i i will say this um i don't think it's a bad thing to be a hard ass in music because sometimes you have to be you know when you're performing and, and look i mean art is subjective um but playing the piece you know either do it right or don't do it at all. Exactly. You know, th there's a reason why certain songs are set to the beats per minute that they are. There, there's a reason why it's important to make sure that you're in tune every time you play. Um, 
and don't get me wrong, I mean, I love punk rock. You know, I love Helter Skelter by the Beatles. That song is way out of tune. Um, you know, when a, when, a, when a song is being released as a statement, that's one thing. But when you're playing a composition and your stuff isn't up to par to where it should be, and you still go on stage like it's no big deal, I kind of can't respect that. And, you know, if people are like, you know, oh, well, it's easy for you to say. I'm like, yeah, it is easy for me to say because I put that standard on myself. Right. You know, I, I, I have uh, Dr. Delman and Dr. Verwasser and my late brother, Mike, to made me appreciate the fact that being on stage is a privilege. Exactly. Being able to learn an instrument is it's you know there's it's not a birthright you know Uh, show that you could do it or get the fuck off stage the 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 fun part about that was yes performing and being in the performance is is the gift is what you've what you've worked hard for that is the that that is the gift um the funniest i always i'll remember every time i was on you know out competing on the field some of the goofy stuff that happened that they just nobody noticed except for me and him. Mm. That was it. Nobody knew like, Hey, like one time I remember I took a step back because we were going, you know, I was doing like a 30 yard freaking movement that, that, that ball, that phrase. Mm -hmm. And I took my first step and I sunk into mud Ah. (laughs) and I had to catch up. Um, or when I had to bulldoze a guy, uh, a poor freak, this, the, 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 during the parades, these guys with these stupid junk carts were out there trying to sell crud to kids. And there, we were told freaking run them over mm. They're If they're in your way, take them out. And I did this thing. I played, I tucked the horn shoulder, charged it into the, into the third row of the cart and just popped right back up. Like it was nothing. Uh, I've had to elk bong some people. Yeah, the I, uh, I mean I'm I'm not proud of it, but I'm not ashamed to admit it. But <laughs> it had to be done. <laughs> the the funniest one was uh, this uh, one of one of the drunk one of the uh, flag girls would, would was uh, this one part of the show would do a acrobatic routine. She was a she was a gymnast and an acrobat, mm. and for some reason our second comp- competition show, she and you could hear the even the judge goes, oh she's rolling up on the guy and he just kicked her right up. <laughs> Uh-oh. she rolled up right on my foot perfectly that i just 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 did one little quick kick to fly her back up in the air <laughs> do her little spin oh my just goodness the, some of that stuff and he's just like he's like how well what was your thought process in that situation she was on my foot there you go <laughs> so i i guess in hindsight you know although it's hilarious listening to buddy rich curse like a chew, sailor against chew, chew his, somebody out yeah to chew someone out I, it was cannibalism sir okay he I, I, mean, I, I mean you know he just left a little less on the bone than some others have okay i mean i've joked i've been yelled at by the best of them i'm it ain't nothing gonna phase me in this world but yeah <laughs> I, I hear you but i i will say this i mean you know for for his caliber of performance you know, regardless of how I feel about him because of opinions on music outside of jazz, which I incredibly disagree with him on. Um, I'm not going to deny his importance in the world of music and how he shaped drummers that came after him. You know, Neil Peart, uh, Peter Chris, and even Carmine Apice, a, a piece as he likes to call himself, you know, uh, reference Buddy Rich as an influence. Um, the man was a legend and it is a legend and you know if if he wanted the best out of him out of his band because that's what he expected out of himself i can't blame him i i can't either especially when when you say the results speak for themselves i mean obviously if he was going out there playing like shit and he was ripping the other the other people for for playing correctly then you know that'd be one thing but if he's if he's holding himself to that standard and they're not holding themselves to that standard and they're calling themselves professionals, that's the biggest insult to that world I've ever seen. Yeah. You know, I've never confused myself with being a professional musician. I never will. My, my, my skills stopped at high school. However, 
I could still to this day when somebody you know marches out of formation or plays a freaking rope note wrong and plays a clam, you're damn right. I'm gonna hear that thing from a mile away and go, you know, and hear hear the nine one one chants, you know, right. here you know here it comes, because I mean you know I'm I you know you might have fooled the rest of this world about getting getting paid for this gig, but you're not gonna fool me. That was a situation that I found myself in with my previous uh, cover band, um, Hard Drive. Um, even in its initial formation as Shockwave, um, the guitarist that was in the band didn't understand proper usage of an amplifier or how to use uh, the pickup switch. You know, keep it on the treble for uh, for, for a rhythm. Switch to the neck pickup. For um, for for solos, he would do it in reverse, and you know, one time I actually modified his amp so that it sounded just right. And he completely screwed it up again by touching it after I was done, to the point where it's like you couldn't hear my bass. Yeah, you know, and the the drummer couldn't keep time if you put a metronome next to him. Mm. You know, um, here comes Dr. I, Beat for me. That's that was the most egregious sin we could ever commit. So when the guitarist quits because of a disagreement on something with the drummer, um, I got suckered into playing the guitar again. And mind you, I was on vacation that week. Um, that Monday, I'm in front of the Stone Pony in Asbury Park with my wife. I get a phone call. Lou. The guitarist quit. Um, can you play guitar this weekend? And I was like, uh, this is a hell of a time to ask me. Um, but I said, sure, I will. So mind you, I'm on vacation. I'm getting text messages and phone calls every day from these guys. And I'm just like, guys, I'm on vacation. Leave me alone here. <laughs> so, you know, fr Friday we come back. I do the show. Goes off without a hitch. Um, and I'm thinking, all right, maybe this is the, the, the piece that we needed me on guitar with my buddy, Doc Reinhardt on, on bass. And that's when we switched the name to hard drive. And for two and a half, three years, right until the time COVID occurred, uh, we were doing two to three shows a week. And I was playing a Les Paul switched to strats because the, the amount of shows that we were doing was killing my back, <laughs> yeah. you know, cause Les Pauls are much heavier than than strats but every time we had rehearsal it was like the drummer didn't know the song every time we went on stage the drummer couldn't keep time so it just got to a point where i just said you know what i'm only making like a 100 bucks a gig like i realize this is a hobby at this point but i'd rather play with people who know how to play and not get paid and have to subjugate myself to this crap. <laughs> <laughs> and and now and now you just have a drummer who who can keep time. He just can't keep his mouth shut. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, if Wayne can hear you, he can keep time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke. It's yeah. A joke. But uh, anyway, got got, got got to break got to break the uh, the ball the boss's balls a little bit. You know. <laughs> That's right. But uh, we uh, anyways, we're going to wrap it up. I'm glad that we got to talk some wrestling and we got to uh, do the uh, Buddy Rich tapes. It was a fun listen and hearing us talk about our, uh, you know, our, our uh, high school band uh, stories. You know, it was fun for us. We hope it was fun for you. Oh, the and, old uh, war stories. They're the best. Yeah. Uh, James, you got anything you want to plug? I'm um, just uh, everybody. Uh you know follow the saturdays in the fall facebook page and the uh, youtube page uh we're we're doing our best to, to do two shows a week sometimes uh the days aren't always fitting out we you know we're the same as as you know rat salad right now until you know until hopefully soon you know this it's still a hobby we're not getting paid to do it so we're having trouble trying to navigate life and you know everything else going on in the world so but it's a good football podcast. We're enjoying, we do college football all the year round. We enjoy talking, uh, even during the, uh, what everyone else calls the off season. We do not call it that. We just call it talking season and actual mm -hmm. during the games. So, 
um just follow that and then uh enjoy a uh, rat salad review especially when i have to change scenery back here and go away <laughs> from the mountains and go more to the rolling hills there you go and we're actually going to come back uh to rat salad review on the uh 27th of september where we're going to be talking with steve rosen who wrote a book called tone chaser about uh the late great eddie van halen so we're excited about that then afterwards uh for sweeps months uh we're going to be talking the ozzy discography and the kiss discography then i guess eventually one day for manny we'll do the alice discography but that's going to take yeah. forever <laughs> Uh, you were saying we're saying this as as you know ozzy has an extensive of uh, discography of like what like six songs or six albums ozzy's got 13 oh god yeah it's true and kiss has i lost count uh yeah, kiss has too many that that one's gonna hurt and it, yeah. now now will the person who did this idea actually be in half the shows i i she better <laughs> You know, with the Kiss ones, it's like, you know, you, you may have to do three albums a week, but thankfully they're all a half hour or less. Exactly. I mean, yeah, they're, they're not that long. I mean, you know, they, they don't they don't do, uh, you know, uh, was it Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner uh, type songs? James is not going to forgive us for doing Iron Maiden versus Judas Priest. Ever. Never. You will never, ever, ever stop me from that. OK, I suffered through a lot of that. Uh, yeah, not, it was a fun not my bag. That's okay. not my bag. I hey. admitted it. I admitted it. I did my best, and I was ob- as objective as possible. Thankfully, I can meet you halfway on similar musical tastes, so that's a good thing. Exactly. I didn't expect mine to be great, but anyway, let's get out. Let's, let's let me stop the Irish goodbye because I uh, yeah, it's late. <laughs> it is. It is. James Lilquist from Rat Side Review. And from Saturdays in the Fall, thanks for coming on Music is Life podcast. If you want to find out more about the podcast, check us out over on my link tree. That's Music is Life podcast. And also check out the mothership, if you will. Ratsa Review over at RatsaReview.com. We are 200 hours away from monetization. Make it happen. Yes, James Because we, we want to make major, make major most of pictures, baby. That's right, baby. If you will. And please let us will. Anyways, <laughs> James Lilliquist, thanks for coming on the show. And remember, all art is valid, including wrestling and Buddy Rich diatribes. Cheers.